It's 1992, just days before the Euro kicks off in Sweden. Eight qualified teams are at their camps readying themselves for the big showdown. But here's the twist, none of them will lift the trophy. Sounds confusing, right? Well, the eventual champions are actually on vacation, football being the last thing on their minds. Why? Because they didn't even qualify. But 10 days before the start of the tournament, something unexpected happened. Due to the ongoing Yugoslav wars, the United Nations imposed sanctions on Yugoslavia. Consequently, FIFA and UEFA expelled Yugoslavia from Euro 1992. And just like that, Denmark, the team that finished second to Yugoslavia in the qualifiers, stepped in at a moment's notice. Unlike the other teams, Denmark wasn't well prepared for the tournament. Their goalkeeper Peter Schmeichel later reflected on their readiness saying, there are a lot of stories about us being on the beach. We were still match fit, but completely switched up from football. We had to regain the desire to play and win football games. The Denmark coach at the time, Richard Moller Nielsen, had a monumental task ahead of him. Nielsen was already hated by his own players, so motivating them was always going to be tricky for him. In fact, he was disliked by the entire nation of Denmark. But why you might ask? Well, it was all because of his style of play. During the 1986 World Cup, Denmark showcased an entertaining brand of football under the management of Sepp Piontek. Even though they were embarrassed 5 goals to 1 by Spain in the round of 16, they won fans worldwide with their victories over Uruguay and Germany as they topped their group. While the Danes were happy about their run despite the loss, Nielsen, who was the assistant coach at the time, saw them as the happiest losers in the world. So when the Danish FA reluctantly gave him the head coach position after their failed pursuit of other managers in 1990, Nielsen finally had the chance to change the mentality of the squad in the whole country. He opted for a more defensive structure, prioritizing solidity over an eye-catching brand of football. However, the players were not happy with his approach. Goalkeeper Peter Schmeichel once said, Piontek made Danish football upper class, then Nielsen made it lower class. And their star player Michael Lodrup retired from the national team refusing to play for Nielsen. Even after their unexpected call-up for Euro 1992, Michael Lodrup refused to go, while his brother Brian gave in and joined the team. Brian Lodrup and Peter Schmeichel were just two of a handful of players who were playing in major European leagues. Most of the Denmark squad for Euro 1992 was made up of players from the domestic league, and everyone expected them just to be a void filler and go out in the group stages. Even most of the players felt that way about their chances. France, the defending champions Netherlands and the world champions Germany were the ones thought to be the favourites. And Denmark's results in the first two group matches did not do much to lift the spirits of the Danish fans. While they drew the first game against a strong England team consisting of the likes of Gary Lineker, Paul Mersen and David Platt, Denmark lost the second game against host nation Sweden and found themselves sitting bottom of their group. And in order to qualify from their group, Denmark not only needed to beat one of the favourites France in their final group game, but they also needed Sweden to do something against England. Even the Danish players themselves were playing mini golf a day before their game against France and sure about their chances of beating them. But against all odds, Denmark defeated France thanks to goals from Larsen and Elstrup. Scored there by Elstrup, the substitute. And with Sweden beating England in the other game, Denmark finished second behind Sweden and qualified for the semi-finals. As Group 1 runners-up, Denmark faced Group 2 winners and defending champions Netherlands in the semi-finals. The Netherlands team boasted elite talent such as Van Basten, Rijkaard, Ruud Hulit, Koeman and a young Dennis Bergkamp. To say Denmark were the underdogs is a massive understatement. Larsen gave Denmark an early lead, but the Dutch quickly equalized through Bergkamp. Larsen then put Denmark ahead again minutes after the equaliser, and as time ticked away it seemed like Denmark would secure the win. However, minutes before the final whistle, Reichard equalised for the Dutch taking the game to extra time and eventually penalties. Goalkeeper Peter Schmeichel stepped up once again as he denied Van Basten from the spot. 
and with everyone else converting their penalties, Denmark somehow made it to the Euro final. While Nielsen's defensive strategy had been instrumental in their journey, it was their frequent back passes to Peter Schmeichel that captured everyone's attention. This was before the introduction of the back pass rule, so opponents couldn't do anything but be annoyed. But their ultimate challenge lay ahead as they prepared to face the world champions Germany in the final. Denmark once again found themselves as the underdogs, but with the prestigious trophy just 90 minutes away, everyone was prepared to give their all and bring the first ever major trophy to their country. Jensen opened the scoring with a crucial goal, giving Denmark the lead. Following this, the team showcased their defensive solidity defending with the utmost determination. Even when their defense was breached and Germany came close to scoring, Schmeichel made tremendous saves protecting Denmark's lead. Late in the second half, Vilfor sealed the victory with a much needed second goal. This goal held special significance for Vilfort, as his little girl was terminally ill back at home. After arriving at the tournament in an unconventional manner and defeating three of the favorites along their way, Denmark lifted the prestigious trophy. For a country that wasn't a football juggernaut and had a population of less than 5 million, becoming the champions of Europe was a moment of immense pride for all Danes. Despite the public dislike for Nielsen, he achieved what nobody ever thought possible. They not only laid the foundation for future Danes, but also inspired other small countries with little to no footballing history to believe that anything is possible. Years later, Schmeichel captured the essence of their unlikely triumph perfectly by saying, that comes from not defiance, but not accepting that we're a small country. So it's more a mentality, I think. I think that more than anything was why we won the European Championship. 